Hello and welcome to Launch University. This week we're going to talk about customer validation and getting in depth, defining customer types. Uh, I am Eric Ralston, co-founder and futurist at Fuse. Uh, I will be guiding th you through this five-week journey in order to go from idea to plan. Uh, this video is a companion to a live course where we will take the uh, informational and expositional topics and put them into these videos. And we're going to put the live workshops and put those online. Uh, it's never too late to try to reach out to Fuse. You can check us out at FuseSPC.com in order to find out when the next slate of live sessions will be. Uh, this week is week one, customer validation, measuring demand for a prospective product or service. Ideally before that product or service even exists, because why build something if you don't know people actually need it? And this week is really about who is my customer and really trying to understand what does that mean in the context of your offering. Uh, the most obvious people that you need to find are someone who's in pain, uh, someone who's hungering for what you offer. So you have a painkiller. It's not just a vitamin to uh, slightly help them. It is a painkiller for the worst migraine they've ever had in their life. Uh, and for the first slate of customers, it's not just that they're a user of the product, but they're an evangelist for the product. So what is an evangelist? So an evangelist is someone who will pay for the product and then tell others about the product. They'll be the champion. In this customer validation journey, we're gonna cover a six part roadmap. Uh, this video covers step number one, defining your customer types. Uh, this is an important step because when you, I say customer, you need to have a more nuanced perspective than just a person with money whose problem I can solve. Is there more than one customer role? Uh, do your customers fit into more than, and not just do I have more than one customer segment, or do I have more than one niche? Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the types of customers, the teams of people who are interacting with your product or service. It is not just a matter of them needing it. It's a matter of how they interact with it during the process of awareness through acquisition, through support. So I would break up customer types into four basic buckets. There are different buckets that I have seen online, but I would say that these are my four. Uh, and they're a pretty good framework for understanding uh, how you should see your customers as having different roles in relationship to your offering. So the first is the most obvious one. I'm going to spend almost no time on it saying the user, the person who benefits from the value, they actually have their hands on it. I hope that they're the ones that are using it day to day. And then hopefully they're the most likely ones to become champions of the product or service, um, promoting it to others, which is a very important aspect of an evangelist. Uh, the next type would be a decider. This is the person who chooses based on a set of options. This would be the only person who can give it an actual green light. I want that one. I will say that the, the user probably gives feedback and then the buyer and the tech are people who could actually red light the, the purchase where it's like, you know, either slow it down or completely put the kibosh on it because there's some sort of misfit to the, to the user or the organization. Uh, so the next type would be the buyer who has the resources to acquire the item. Uh, this could be as simple as whoever in the house has the income, and that might be the person who buys it. Or uh, it could be a third party. We could have a third party pay model where the buyer is actually completely separate from the user or the decider. Uh, this would be relevant if, say, it's something you claim health insurance against. Like the, the user might be the patient, but the buyer is actually the insurance company, for instance. Uh, in that case, you have a, a slightly more exotic business model that we can talk about next week. Uh, and then finally, the tech customer, the one who evaluates the fit and function of the product. Uh, if you think about all four of these, I would say on a, on a high end, like, so given my background in technology, on a high end purchase of like enterprise software, this actually seems obvious that it'd be a, a team of people. The user would be the actual people who want to click on stuff on their screen. The decider would be the CIO of the company who's like, yes, uh, go buy this thing. I like it. The buyer would be the, the huge procurement team who does a legal review and a security review and all these things. And then the tech would be, you know, the legal team and the security team. And then also the IT operations team that's going to figure out how to deploy it and things like that. I mean, those are pretty obvious to, to me, given my living understanding. But that's like a really exotic purchase. Like surely like simple purchases couldn't possibly have more than one customer type. That's insane. Like what if I'm just buying a bike? What if somebody's just buying a bike for their kid? I mean, come on, how hard is that? How hard, is there a team of people? Well, maybe, maybe there's a team of people. Oh, there's like a family. 
so I guess if there's a family and they're going to buy a bike, because it's it's family, like it has to live in the garage, like it has to be moved from the store to the house. Like there's going to be a team of people who execute on this. Uh, so let's think about it as like maybe grandma here is the buyer because it's maybe it's a birthday purchase and grandma wants to buy a bike for, uh, you know, the kids. The kids here who would probably be the users of the bike. And already we recognize like the person who buys the bike is different than the user of the bike. Because it's the kids. Kids don't have money. What is it? Well, I mean, nowadays they probably have credit cards. I mean, they have, they have cell phones. They probably have credit cards. Uh, so we have we have rolling here a buyer and a user. And then, oh, my gosh, the tech. Well, the dad is the one who has to go to the store and evaluate the bike. They're already in the market for the bike. And between the grandma and the kids, there could be a bike. But then it's in the parking lot. Uh, dad here is the one who's probably going to drive in this family, at least. He'll be the one who's going to drive down to the uh, department store and he will purchase the bike and whatever bike fits in his car, he's probably gonna favor. And that's a big, good piece of valuation. And whatever bike he, he knows how to repair uh, would be important. And then maybe whatever bike has, you know, the best the best tires or things like that, he might have very specific criteria down to maybe does it come with training wheels. Uh, and he might, he might be the one who's the most uh, upfront about that. And then uh, mom over here, looks like we have a, we might have a decider there. Uh, she might be the one who actually decides whether or not the kids are old enough to do it. Uh, she might be the one who, who clarifies the budget, uh, such that the kids aren't thrashing a multi hundred dollar bike and they're really starting with something reasonable. Um, and she might be the one who decides how it's used, uh, too. So remember that that person who has the authority to say when they can ride that bike, uh, that's important to your product as well, or your offering as well because you don't have one customer you have a team of them uh, how do we capture that how can we put that down so we have our first uh, exercise so the f the first one would be to sit down write down a quick summary of your customer types uh, and i've given you a guide to get you through this this guide is helpful for the entirety of launch university um, there's one guide per week the first guide here for customer validation, it's about challenging assumptions and measuring possibility. Uh, it contains worksheets. So these worksheets are meant to provoke kind of a thoughtful, creative uh, exercise for you to evaluate your current understanding, document it, and then hopefully iterate on it. Uh, hopefully with the founding team. Maybe you have a team behind you, hopefully, let's hope. Or maybe at least you have a life partner behind you, maybe, hope. Uh, and you basically work through the sheet top to bottom. And this one's really easy. So you'll start off, you'll talk about what is the users. We have some prompting questions that clarify the roles. What is the decider? Uh, what is the buyer and what is the tech? Uh, and then once you're basically done clarifying those, what you do, as I would say with all of these, you want to sit down, you want to keep this on hand and you want to iterate on it uh, as it changes over time. And that would be the worksheet on clarifying customer types. Uh, please sit down and work through it. Try to find at least one per category. If you just say, this is the user, same, same, same. I can't second guess you. At the same time, I'm, I'm skeptical. I am, that's all I'll say. Well, thank you. That's been customer validation, how to define your customer types. Hopefully you're sitting down and you're gonna get through defining at least one each for your customer types and come prepared to class to talk about them. Uh, if you would like to know more about testing your big ideas, I would recommend the book Testing Business Ideas from the folks at Strategizer. Uh, they're a big inspiration for the customer validation portion of this course, and they have dozens and dozens of ideas on how to test your idea. And hopefully it'd be something that's more specific to your offering that would get way deeper than even I get to go in this course. So please check that out. Uh, please stay on board for more Launch University, and good luck.